Flash, the solution for humanity. Dear brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And welcome to a new episode of Health. Fat or cholesterol has been uh, in the blood, has been very talked about in the media, in the newspapers, in the magazines. Everybody's talking about your cholesterol. Cholesterol is going to kill you. What is cholesterol? People don't know even, and they still talk about cholesterol, and they're very afraid of cholesterol. Stop taking uh, uh, fats in your food. Stop doing this. We still talk about cholesterol, and we actually, most of the people, when they ask them, do you know about cholesterol, they don't know about it very well. So we're here to talk about cholesterol and your health and your, in your blood. And with us today is Dr. Ahmad Abdus Salam, consultant and professor of cardiology in Ain Shams University, Cairo, Egypt. Dr. Ahmad, thank you very much for coming today. Thank you, Dr. Ahmad. Cholesterol. It's a mania. These days, everybody's talking about <laughs> if you have cholesterol, you'll be dead. When you ask them what is cholesterol, they don't know what cholesterol is. So I'm asking you, what is cholesterol? Yeah, what you said is more or less <coughs> true because cholesterol is one of the, what is known as lipid, which is part of the nutrition which we have. Together with, it is also sensitized by the liver in mm -hmm. the body. Cholesterol and other lipid forms, especially triglycerides, are very important because it plays a very important role in different parts of the body. We can't say that it <coughs> is totally unhealthy or it is totally dangerous because you, you should have cholesterol. It's normal to have cholesterol yeah, in your of blood. Course, yes. That's okay. You should have it in the blood, but in a certain <coughs> quantity. This quantity is very important for different metabolic process occurs inside the body. And if you have these levels of uh, cholesterol and triglycerides within the normal range, so you are totally away from having any abnormality in your body. And on the other hand, you will benefit from the useful effect and the need of your body to this cholesterol. When your blood cholesterol level become elevated above a certain set conditions or a certain numbers or you have other conditions, for example, diabetes. So you have to be sure mm. that your blood cholesterol level is even below normal mm. to be away from any harm that may occur with this elevated level of cholesterol. So when do we say that we have uh a raised cholesterol or lipids or fat in our blood? Actually, it is a laboratory measures of the lipid profile with the special precautions. You have to be fasting for at least 10 hours. You can take water if you need, but if you don't need water, you, you are not allowed to have any other uh, food or other drinks during the fasting period. After this period, you take a blood sample and uh, through a certain laboratory measures, we have a lipid profile which is formed of more or less four or five parameters, all of which are very important because it gives us an idea about the level of the cholesterol, the level of the triglycerides, the level of what is known as the LDL or the low density lipoprotein cholesterol, which yes. is the harmful form, and what is known as <coughs> the high density lipoprotein cholesterol, which is useful form, yes. and other small molecules, which is known as the very low density chylomicrons, lipoprotein, and so forth. So I want you to make it easier for the viewer to know when he or she take or intake fat. Yeah. What happens to this fat and how does it reach all the way to the blood? Actually, we have a video that may demonstrate uh, what we meant by uh, mm. these forms. If we see here, this is the liver and this is the GIT. Fat enter the form inside the body by different form of food or food stuff you, mm -hmm. you may have through egg, through meat, poultry, fish, seafood and dairy products. Yes. All these forms of food contain inside it more or less amount differ from one food stuff to another but at the end of the story all these forms have a fat that enters the body through the gastrointestinal tract. Actually also the liver producing cholesterol through its cells and then goes through the blood. 
The other form is the triglyceride, as I said before. It is also entered the body through different foodstuffs and through the GIT, it's absorbed to reach to the circulation. Mm. This is known as the triglyceride. This is another form of lipids. Actually, these forms of uh, lipids, either cholesterol or the triglyceride, are stored in the body in forms of fatty tissues through a certain type of cells, <coughs> which is known as the adipose tissues, to uh, be used in different uh, So this is what makes us fat. Yeah, this is what makes us fat, yes. Fat. To accumulate the fat and storage in the fat cells. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. So when you say there is uh, a good lipid and a, there is a bad lipid or a hazardous lipid, yeah. Let's talk about the good part first. What's what's good in cholesterol and other fats that we have in the blood? Cholesterol and other fat of the body uh, play a very, very, very important role in different metabolic processes inside the body. We can say that it enters in the synthesis of the cell wall of different cells of the body, especially the cells of the brain. And when cholesterol decreases, extensively from the circulation, this may make some abnormalities like dementia, for example. It, it, mm. it is induced due to a lack of cholesterol, so don't be obsessive enough to make your cholesterol very low. Also, some speak about cancers and its relation to uh, low cholesterol levels. So low cholesterol? Yeah, yes. low cholesterol levels. So yeah. you have to be sure that your cholesterol level is low, but in its way to do its job, not to be deficiency and inducing harm to the body. So cholesterol increase or cholesterol decrease, both of them are harmful. You should be in the border zone according to your situation. This is a very important issue. We have to discuss it. What we differ and what we argue about it, what is the normal level of cholesterol? Yes. What yes. level you want me to have to be in the safe zone and be away from being hypo or low or hypo or high? This is the question which is more or less changing day after the other in this era. But... Other functions of the fats or the cholesterol also, it enters in, in the senses of different <coughs> hormones. Hormones. These hormones, of course, are very important to the body because when these hormones decrease, it may induce other harms. And the, the source in this situation will be due to the decrease the amount of cholesterol. It may also play an important role as an insulator. It, when fat is, is present inside <coughs> the body, it will prevent decreasing the blood pressure inside the body when it's exposed to cold weather, for example. Here is a demonstration inside that shows that the functions or other rules of cholesterol inside the body. The first we spoke about the insulator, the others we spoke about it support different organs of the body, especially the heart. It also is very important for transportation, absorption and digestion of the vitamins <coughs> and production of hormones, as I said before. This is more or less the functions of cholesterol and its importance inside the body. So having fat in, in the body is very essential yeah. and it's useful, it's not that bad for okay, yourself. Okay, but yes. in a certain in situation, a certain, certain, certain amount. amount <laughs> yes. So uh, on the other side, if you have extra fat in your blood, what does that do to you? Actually, it is very dangerous because this fat, when it in increases inside the circulation, it should be <coughs> deposited in different tissues of the body, especially the blood vessels and inducing what is known as atherosclerosis. This is a very dangerous situation because it precipitating different diseases. The most dangerous is inducing angina or myocardial infarction to the heart. It may induce something in the retina and the brain, the kidneys in the lower limbs. Different organs when it's affected by the position of fats inside it, it will induce a very, very harmful situation and maybe in some situations it's life-threatening. Life-threatening, so atherosclerosis, I'm sure many of the viewers know the word atherosclerosis, mm. but they don't know how bad could it be yeah, uh, it's very to, bad, to, as to I the said. body. So, it may yes. be as harmful as being <coughs> life-threatening in certain situations. Mm -hmm. So the, it has to be a balance between having fats in your blood, but still it has to be not that very high so keeping this balance is very difficult for most of the people, especially those who would uh, have, I mean, like, love to have the greasy or the fatty food or the lifestyle of their food is, uh, is more to the fatty stuff, especially the, the junk food that our kids do love. Yeah. And actually, unfortunately, they use more of, uh, of the fat in their food. 
which might lead on the on the long term to have excess or extra fat in their blood. Totally true. Definitely. So we have a short break, and then we'll be coming back to talk more about this uh, this problem and the balance between the good and the bad uh, lipids and the good and the bad uh, cholesterol. So brothers and sisters, we have a short break. Please don't go away. We'll be coming back in a few minutes. Until then, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Marriage or divorce? What's Islamic ruling? Nikah. Solution or problem? Heaven or hell? Uh, there is a misconception. You choose. Beauty, wealth, family status, virtue. Decide what you want. Decide your choice. Be sad or be happy. It's your choice. Join Dr. Zakir Naik in Better Half or Bitter Half every Friday at 6.30 p.m. and repeat telecast at 9.30 a.m. UK on Peace TV. <laughs> Dear brothers and sisters, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And we're back and we're still talking about cholesterol in your blood. And as we have known in the earlier segment, cholesterol is important for you. It's not that bad at all, unless it's a high cholesterol. Dr. Ahmed, we were talking about a person with a high cholesterol. How do I know that I have high cholesterol? If somebody is, is fat, for example, they should expect themselves to be having a higher cholesterol blood level? Actually, obesity or increasing weight is uh, suspecting you have a lipid profile which is elevated, but uh, on the other hand, being slim does not mean that you are with normal cholesterol level. Yeah. So you, you may be slim and your lipid profile is abnormal. This is a very important message which I want to send it to all the audience here, is that the body weight, <coughs> although it may be a positive indicator for having this lipidemia or elevated uh, fat in the blood but on the other hand if you have a slim body this does not mean that you have a normal lipid profile so I think clue here is measuring the lipid profile and we can say that there is a cut off age for example around 40 years above which you have to do a lipid profile at least once yearly yearly to, yeah yes to be sure that your lipid profile is normal. This is, of course, together with providing the underlying precipitating factors uh, that may inducing elevation of your lipid profile. Precipitating factors like what? Precipitating factors mm. like sedentary lifestyle. Don't do any type of exercise. This is very risky. Smoking is very risky. Yes. Stressful lifestyle, eating a large amount of fat and junk food and uh, fast food, something like this. This is very dangerous. Yes. Having a family history of atherosclerosis. This is also very dangerous because there is uh, uh, some sort of uh, hereditary forms or genetic abnormalities with which uh, this lipidemia occurs or related blood uh, fat occurs. Also, being male, for example, this carries a higher risk to have atherosclerosis and uh, yeah, unfortunately. having a higher, yeah, unfortunately. Also, the white uh, races are more susceptible for uh, hypercholesterolemia than the black ones. 
So if you have any form of this, you have to take care and you have to measure blood cholesterol to be sure that it is normal. Yes. So are there many types just having high blood lipid or cholesterol in the blood or are there different types of this? Uh, actually, as I said before, there's two main types of uh, lipids inside the body, which is the cholesterol. This is the major form and it may be a dangerous or the most dangerous form, but there's other forms of uh, elevated blood lipids, which is the triglyceride, hypertriglyceridemia. The patient, the patient may have hypercholesterolemia alone or hypertriglyceridemia alone or may have a mixed form of both elevated level of cholesterol <coughs> and triglyceride. Each one of these has a different medication which helps you together with the non-pharmacological treatment for solving the problem. Yeah, so this takes us to the... Uh to the complications or the problems. You mentioned the atherosclerosis yeah. as the major problem that could happen because of your high fat level. Is that the only problem that could happen on the high fat level in the blood? No, it's not the only, but maybe <coughs> the dangerous, the most dangerous. The most uh, dangerous. Uh, yeah, complication or sequelae of a neglected elevated level of cholesterol. This film may demonstrate other forms of, of abnormality as I said, there is yes. a good form and a bad form of cholesterol, but mm. when these bad forms are increased, it may induce what is known as the plaque atherosclerotic plaque. Mm -hmm. The presence of this atherosclerotic plaque is very dangerous because it's not only inducing narrowing of the blood pressure and making you more susceptible for having an attack of ischemia according to the area which is affected by this plaque. What I mean, if this plaque is present in the coronary circulation, I mean that the blood vessel that's, uh, that supplies the heart, so you will have a heart attack. If this vessel is affecting the brain, so you will have a brain attack or what is known as a stroke. If this occurs in the lower limbs, you will have ischemia in the lower limbs, which is known as claudications. All these are because of the presence of this plaque. Also, this plaque inducing rigidity of the blood vessels, so it may be one of the precipitating factors of elevation of the blood pressure and inducing, as I said before, hypertension. So mm -hmm. this is atherosclerosis, which is very risky, restricting the blood flow to the target area which it supply, but also there is other forms, as I said, like inducing hypertension, systemic <coughs> hypertension, <coughs> inducing a heart failure, inducing coronary disease, as I said, if mm -hmm. it is affected artery. It may affecting also the peripheral uh, circulations of the limbs. It may inducing strokes or even may inducing cerebral hemorrhage. Yes. So it is a problem that you have a high fat level in your blood. And, uh, and of course, uh, as we saw in the video and as you've said, it might lead to serious problems. Yeah. So this takes us to the, uh, to the management of this problem. And how to avoid it first? Avoiding it's better than <coughs> treating, yeah. except in a very limited situations in which hereditary play a very important role. These patients are really at risk and they may have no other risk factors. They do exercise and they are not smokers and they are restricting fat in diet and so on and so forth. <coughs> but even with this all measure, their blood cholesterol level is elevated. This is related to the synthesis of the lipid inside the liver. But at the end of the story, we, we have to say that protection is better than treatment and you have to take care of yourself, especially above the age of 40, and you have to take care of the amount of fat you have. You take every day, you should do some exercise, you have to stop smoking if you are a smoker. All these maneuvers, if you do it, of course you have to reduce your weight. If you are obese, you have to reduce this obesity, you have to have a standard uh, body weight, if you have other conditions like diabetes, for example, <coughs> which is dangerous because both diabetes and abnormal lipid profile are two faces of the same coin. Mm -hmm. You can't control one without controlling the other. So if you have dyslipidemia and diabetes, you have to control the blood sugar also to have your blood lipid profile also normal. According to your risk maneuvers, you, you may begin with treating the patients up to nine months with non-pharmacological treatment, as I said. Just, just taking care of the... Uh, yeah, taking care of what I said. After which, if he has no response of, with these maneuvers or non-pharmacological treatment, he has to take a step forward by taking medications for this uh, treatment. Mm. For Recently, this some of the, the new... I wouldn't call them drugs. I would call them, uh, I don't know, commercial um, 
medication or on shelf medication yeah. that gives people a very, very good thing. You tell them eat as you want and just take these and to prevent the fat from going into your body and just, just, just uh, like enjoy your, your meals and don't get fat. No way. Yeah. All this doesn't work. It, these medications or these uh, on shelf tablets, if you want to say, helps to <coughs> decrease the amount of lipid absorbed from the GIT which you take. May be true, yes. but you miss another important issue, which is the synthesis of your of this cholesterol inside the body. Also, it may decrease the amount of fat entered, but also the harmful type of LDL is still present, which carry the harm and the risk for developing atherosclerosis. So it is not a matter of just only reducing the amount of fat taking in in food, but also there is another issue inside your circulation. You have to control it together with decreasing the amount of fat inside your body to make all the conditions moving in synergy. But would it help? Yeah, of course, it may help. It might but help. it's not the only way. Are, are they safe? Some of them are safe. Some of them are, you should take it uh, special precautions in certain situations. If you have certain conditions like the liver disorder, something like this, you have to take care when you take it. Yes. So this brings us to the, uh, the people who don't have the... Uh, the chance to get their cholesterol or lipid uh, level reduced just by uh, taking care of themselves and doing some exercise and all that. So this gives us, uh, takes us to the next level, which is the medication. What do the medication for, for cholesterol, high fat level in the blood do? I mean, uh, what does it target? Yeah, some of them targeting, again, uh, the decreasing the amount of fat absorbed from the GIT. But other works <coughs> at the synthesis of cholesterol and LDL inside the liver. They abrupt certain part of the circuit of synthesis of cholesterol to decrease the amount of cholesterol uh, synthesized by the liver. So if we decrease the amount of fat absorbed from the GIT and decreasing the amount of cholesterol synthesized inside the liver, so the total amount of cholesterol and LDL is decreased. Okay. And then the HDL or the high dense lipoproteins, which is important to protect the body from the harm of cholesterol, just elevated by doing exercise and stop smoking. There is no medication up till now elevating markedly the HDL. So, as I said before, we have to combine between the non pharmacological <coughs> because it's very important to elevate the HDL and between the pharmacological to decrease the, H the LDL and the cholesterol. So would the medication keep on going, just like other diseases, like the diabetes or hypertension, the person would have to take medication for life, or is it just for a certain period and then until the, the levels of their fat in the blood is uh, adjusted and they just stop the medication? Actually, uh, this is a very good question, but uh, there's two factors affecting the decision of being uh, lifelong <coughs> on uh, lipid-lowering drugs or not. The first one is if you have other conditions, for example, if you are a diabetic, mm -hmm. instead, beside being dyslipidemic, or if you have an attack of uh, coronary artery disease or cerebral vascular disease, all this makes you, you advise to have these medications for life. But if you have discovered this accidentally or the first time of your life to have dyslipidemia, as I said before, we can, and you are not diabetic, you have no family history of ischemic heart disease, cardiovascular disorders, we can begin with a non-pharmacological treatment that may extend up to nine months. During this period, if the blood cholesterol level become good, so we will continue in the non-pharmacological treatment without adding any pharmacological treatment. But after this period, or we, the doctor find that there is no change in the level of cholesterol during this period, he have to take a decision to, to give him a lipid lowering drugs. The amount of lipid lowering drugs once you begin, I think you have to continue for at least three to six months after which you have to reevaluate the condition. If it is good you may you may reduce the the dosage, but to stop it at all I didn't think it will be a good thing or a good advice to the patient to totally stop, especially if he didn't stick to the uh, to the non pharmacological maneuvers as I said. Yeah. One final question that I have or I get from most of my patients, especially those who are obese, is there a food that I can take? We know the food that we should not take or to, to reduce. Is there a food that I can take to decrease the fat in my blood? No, not decrease, but <coughs> there is a healthy fat, especially nuts, 
This is a good fat, yes. a healthy fat, uh -huh. and uh, a healthy food you can take it, and this uh, will give increase the amount of healthy HDL, but it will not decrease the LDL. There is no food that decreasing. It may help, but it it will not, uh, uh, yani eradicate the the problem. Okay, Dr. Ahmed Abdul Salam, consultant and professor of cardiology at HMS University in Cairo, Egypt. Thank you very much for Thank talking you, to us today about the cholesterol and the fats in your blood. Brothers and sisters, I hope that it has been beneficial for you this time to talk about the cholesterol, the fat. Don't take uh, greasy food, or at least try to reduce it if you cannot, and try to stay in shape, exercising, and of course stop smoking. All the advice we've heard from Dr. Ahmed and Shell. Until next episode, I wish you a happy and healthy life. Until then, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. The value of money in the hereafter will be measured by its proper use in the present. According to the glorious Quran, one of the best ways to use your money is to spend it in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by spreading his message of Islam. Peace TV is a non-profit Islamic satellite television channel that is primarily dedicated for just that cause the proper presentation of Islam. It's a great choice to invest in it and a golden opportunity to purify your wealth in a way that pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Support Peace TV. Send your zakat and donations to IRFI Al Ryan Bank, 47 Calthorpe Road, Birmingham, UK. B151TH. Pound account number 0113230. IBAN GB49ARAY 3008301132301. Sort code 300083. Swift BIC code ARAY GB. B22. Please confirm your contribution at support at peacetv.tv. Support Peace TV, the solution for humanity. Their advice. Who was raised under the banner of La ilaha illallah, Muhammad or Rasulullah. Their guidance. Their foundation is based on the Quran and the teaching of the Messenger of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Their example. When the sun is above the head the of, head the, chief. of the chief. Sayyid Rahe. This young man or young lady, on the day of Yawm al Qiyamah, they will be under that shade, the shade of Allah subhanahu going in the divine direction blessing of Allah the world of Muslim youth every Friday at 3 30 p.m. and repeat telecast at 2 a.m. UK on Peace TV